So I'm just a little over a year late on all the theories and speculation about Cardigan, which was Taylor Swift's lead single for her album Folklore. And it's generated so many theories, especially about the iconic love triangle of the album. But I actually thought of something a couple of days ago and I thought, well, let me Google it first before I even make a video about it in case, you know, it's something that's already been discussed. But from my Google searches, it seems like it hasn't really been touched upon. So I thought I'd make my own video about it. Now, I'm not saying that this is entirely my own creative innovation or that this is a theory that nobody else could have come up with. I just think maybe it's so obscure that it's just not reached the mainstream parts of the Taylor Swift fandom yet. The love triangle that's been constructed within the three perhaps most iconic songs in the album, Cardigan, August and Betty, most heavily focuses on the love lives of these three teenagers. Betty, James, and the unnamed girl who we will call August in this video. A lot of the analysis that we go into is often focused on mapping out a linear narrative of events. Who's who, what happened, and how did it all end? I think the song Betty is probably the clearest out of all three in terms of setting out characters and events and how the love story of these three teenagers ended. Granted, in the Disney Long Pond sessions, Taylor does say that she thinks Betty and James get together at the end, but these songs have found a life and lore of their own in the Swifty fandom, so I don't think we need to accept that ending. Anyway, I really like the album Folklore because we're able to extrapolate as much or as little as we want through the details that Taylor provides in her songs. For once, it actually doesn't feel invasive to do so because we know that most of these songs are supposed to be about different people. These songs aren't even about fictional people if we really think about it, because they're relatable lived experiences of millions of people around the world. Now, more interesting than the actual love story itself in the trilogy of the album is the fact that the tone and mood of all three of the songs perfectly encapsulate the personalities of these people in the exact time that they are telling us about their lives. The song Betty is obviously being sung in live time by a young, inexperienced and quite immature James. August is being sung, I think, by August herself, probably a few months after the events have occurred when James has already left her and pursued Betty. But again, this is all up to interpretation. You could say that August is also being sung in live time or it could be sung by August when she's much older. But for me, I definitely think it's a song that's reflecting how the love is still fresh on her mind and she's still reminiscing about it. For me, the song Cardigan isn't just about Betty's love for James though. I think it's a song that's being sung decades later by a much older Betty. And this is a pretty accepted view across the fandom as well. So this isn't, you know, something that I have come up with on my own. I also think it's a song that gives us a very discreet and fleeting snapshot into Betty's actual life and how her life experiences may have influenced the way that she then goes on to perceive her teenage love with James. Now, let's talk about the name Betty itself. I think it's an interesting choice that Taylor Swift made, because when I think of the name Betty, it sounds very old-fashioned, almost like it came straight out of the 1950s. I even went as far as to do a quick Google search and found out that the name was really popular in the 1930s. So when I think about who Betty was and when she lived, I really do imagine somebody who was living in the 1950s. Although Taylor does sing Vintage T Brand New Phone as the first line of the song, and the line Brand New Phone definitely ruins the historical timeline a little bit, but it is a throwaway line, so I'm willing to just ignore it. And when I picture Betty, I also picture her as the actress who played Sandy in the film Grease. There's something about teenage Betty that strikes me as someone who outwardly appeared quite poised and sophisticated. This comes from the lyrics, high heels on cobblestones and black lipstick. Like I said before, she also mentioned vintage teas, so I think she might be someone who's very interested in old-fashioned 
clothes and fashion from a different era. The overall impression I get of Betty is someone who is wise beyond her years and someone who would say I was born in the wrong era. But beneath that layer of sophistication, I feel, is an incredibly melancholy person who seems to have faced something quite tragic in her life, a tragedy that happened before James betrayed her. The first impression we get of this is from the line that's repeated over and over again across the song. And when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed, you put me on and said I was your favourite. Now a lot of people have pointed out how this line is more tragic than romantic, because we get the impression that Betty is someone who has felt discarded and ignored her whole life, until a teenage boy finally took notice of her. We can then start to get an idea of how her backstory, beyond her love story with James, kind of unfolds in the song, and we can get to pick it apart to figure out what actually happened to her that has made her feel this way about her relationship with James. The line, you drew stars around my scars, further unfolds Betty's life story. The scars in question seem to have been there since before James's betrayal, so we can assume Betty may have some emotional trauma from another significant event that has occurred in her life and that James may have been a temporary respite, a distraction from all of the things she might be dealing with outside of her school life. Hence why she follows this lyric up with, but now I'm bleeding. It's like Taylor Swift sings in her song, Bad Blood from 2014, band-aids don't fix bullet holes. Superficial solutions don't actually fix anything. And when James leaves Betty, it actually worsens her emotional trauma. Then there is the most telling line of all that basically confirms what Betty's trauma may be. Leaving like a father, running like water. I actually think this is one of the most striking and beautiful lines in the entire album because it explains so much about Betty's psyche. Now there's no reason for Betty to compare James leaving her like a father leaving a child unless she's experienced this for herself and is making a subconscious connection between two men who are very significant in her life. This is actually quite common in people, especially young girls, who may have had an absent father figure in their childhood and tend to project a lot of their childhood experiences and traumas onto their future relationships. My theory is that Betty, as a child, may have witnessed a terrible divorce or separation between her parents, I'd go as far as to say that her father actually abandoned his family altogether and that this is something that has stayed with Betty. I would say that suffering through such a traumatic event has made her grow up quite quickly. And as we all know, youth and maturity are two key ideas that underpin the song with the line, because I knew everything when I was young. This isn't just a message to James saying that being young isn't an excuse for cheating. I think what Betty is telling us is that she was cynical even when she was young. Instead of being a love-struck teenager full of wide-eyed optimism, the way August almost appears to be in her own song, Betty seems to understand that James's betrayal was almost inevitable. She's dealt with very grown-up problems after all, like divorce, abandonment, separation, when she was a young girl and might have even lost all of her childhood wonder about happy endings long before she met James. Now the whole reason I even decided to make this video was for this particular line. Try to change the ending, Peter losing Wendy. Now, my personal new theory is that Peter and Wendy are the names of Betty's parents. And obviously I know that in reality, they're just two characters from the story of Peter Pan. And the reference is a very clear continuation of the song's running theme about not being grown up or growing up too quickly. There is a very clear metaphor here, and I think one that Taylor herself clearly intended. But because this album is called Folklore, and we get to make up our own minds about the stories of these characters, I'm going to stick to this theory, even though it's likely that Taylor herself didn't intend for it to be one. Now the reason I even say this is because the Peter losing Wendy line comes right before Betty sings, leaving like a father, running like water. Structurally, it's very easy to see, again, the subconscious connections she makes between her parents' own failed love story and her own. I also like to think that this song is 
for both James and Betty's father. If we look at the absolutely beautiful post-chorus, we can see some lines that seem ill-fitting for a teenage boy. For example, the line, the smell of smoke would hang around this long. We get no indication in any of the three songs that James is a smoker. Why would Taylor include this very specific smell here and not in any of her other songs? She's put in a reference to Betty's infamous cardigan in James's song about her, so we know that these details are deliberate. When I think about the lingering smell of smoke in the context of this song, I can only picture cigarettes or the smoke rising out of an ashtray. That again really reminds me of a stereotypical image of a father in the 1950s smoking a pipe. I think the post-chorus is talking to both James and her father, one at a time. It's like a montage of memories from her childhood and teenage years that binds Betty to both her father and James. For example, the line, I knew you'd linger like a tattoo kiss, is a very obvious nod towards James, because the phrase tattoo kiss isn't something you normally would associate with a fatherly figure, and more with a lover. But the line, I knew you'd haunt all of my what-ifs, could be about both James and her father. She could have questions like, what if James hadn't cheated? And other questions like, what if my father hadn't left us? Now, I literally just thought of this as I was editing the video, so I thought it would be worth adding it in. But the lyric, chasing shadows in the grocery line, again, could also be a reference to Betty's father rather than James. Because the image that this line in particular evokes um, is one of a lost child running around a supermarket trying to find their parents. And it definitely evokes that sense of abandonment you feel as a child when you're all by yourself and lost. And yeah, I just thought that this line in particular could be a reference to that. But again, I can also see it as a reference to James and how heartbroken she feels. And that his presence is so deeply felt even in the mundane aspects of her life, like going shopping. But it's again all up to interpretation. We know that at the end, the line, you'd come back to me, is a reference to James eventually standing on Betty's front porch at her party. But I also wonder if maybe her dad also ends up showing up again sometime later in her life. Anyway, this is just a new interpretation that I've come up with for Cardigan, and nothing is set in stone, so feel free to agree or disagree, or just share your general thoughts about my own theory about Betty and what Cardigan tells us about Betty's life story, and please consider subscribing.